from Tech for Techs. Today we're going to be looking at this Patriot Viper memory. What makes it so special is that it runs at 4400 megahertz. We're going to put it up against some slower memory to see how it actually performs and if it makes much of a difference. We're going to be running in a Fred Ripper machine, see if it takes advantage of the quad channels. The ones we've got in today are two 16 gigabyte kits. Each kit contains two sticks of 8 gigabytes of memory. So in total which is 32 gigabytes. These things also retail for around about 100, 110 UK pounds. Obviously prices vary. We do have links in the description if you wish to purchase. Okay let's have a look at the box of the Patriot Viper gaming memory. You can see on there it shows you two sticks of memory. You can see what specs you've got. This is the 16 gigabyte, 2 times 8 gigabyte kit DDR4, PC4, 3 5200 which is 4400 megahertz and as it says on that it's Viper Steel and it's DDR4 Extreme Performance Memory it looks like they use the same box for all their memory in the steel range they just put the sticker on what tells you the exact specifications on the back you've got a little bit more information as well in English but it just basically says ultra fast DDR4 memory for devices blah 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 uh, but otherwise there's not much on there um, to really go by so let's have a look what we've got in there's no seal on the box so it's just a case of pulling out it comes in a little plastic tray Let's see if you can actually get them out of the plastic. There's one. And there's two. So you can see what they look like. On one side, obviously, you've got your barcode and specifications on it so you know what it is. On the other side, it's just plain. So you've got your Viper head there uh, and some nice styling. Uh, but there's no RGB or anything on these, these are just plain uh, coming in this sort of a, I suppose it's a steel effect on there but otherwise it looks pretty nice with that black slash silver metallic effect obviously if you match it up with the right motherboard it will look pretty nice Okay, so we're going to check to see how well this memory performs running at different speeds. Uh, this is run on a Fred Ripper 3960X CPU, so it gives you a rough idea. This is quite a high-end chip, and uh, obviously the motherboard supports quad-channel DDR4 memory. So as you can see here in the first test, the handbrake, you can actually save your quite a bit of time actually by having faster memory, which is pretty good. On the next test, you'll see on pass mark, you, this is the total score, so from all the tests combined, you can again see that there's quite a big difference between uh, 2,133 megahertz and 4,200 megahertz. The reason why we are not testing 4,400 megahertz, like the memory says it supports, we were unable to get it to run uh, properly at that speed without crashing, hanging or failing to boot on multiple different systems. In the next test we just basically check to see the actual memory mark, so the actual speed the memory is running at. And again here you can see there is a big difference and this is again using pass mark 9. And with all the creative tests we've done here you'll notice that there's usually a big jump between that 2133 megahertz and 3200 megahertz but you only get a little bit of a jump if you go any faster than that. That's basically because the Fred Ripper is designed or optimal at 3200 megahertz. Don't get me wrong, you will get better results if you go higher, but uh, it may be very minimal. I tried 3D Mark to test this graphics score to basically see if it does affect it or not. And as you can see there, there is difference between the different speeds, but it's that minimal. It probably would be more worthwhile spending the extra money what you spend on the memory on a graphics card or better CPU depending on what you're doing. 
I realise that thread rippers are not designed really for gaming, but we get a lot of people asking, can it play games, is it made any better, and so forth, with different speeds of memory, and this is why we're doing these tests. In this test we're checking on Civilization 6. Again, this game is run at 4K, the same as all the other game tests we've run in, because we wanted to give it proper strain. And as you can see there, faster memory does make a difference yet again, but again, very little difference between 3200 and 4200 MHz will make a difference, but again, maybe best to spend your money on a better graphics card. And you'll see this basically repeat itself in most of the gaming tests we've done. You may get probably one frame or two frames, if you're lucky, between the lowest megahertz setting and the highest. And in a lot of games, you may not even notice any difference at all in testing. So, it's one of those things is memory speed in the games that we've tested makes absolutely well, I won't say no difference, but very minimal difference and nothing that would actually make any difference in your play in the games. The minimums, the maximums and the average frames per second all roughly run around about the same. So in basics for this review, would you need to buy memory at this sort of speed? And the basic answer is, well, if there's not much of a price difference, yeah, why not? It will help in, uh, improve performance, especially if you are doing some form of rendering or editing, more creative work than gaming. Uh, but when you're looking at the gaming side of things, it's not going to make much of a difference at all. And bear in mind, usually bigger memory modules like this, or should I say faster ones, uh, generally come with bigger heat sinks. So if you've got a heat sink and fan on your motherboard, make Make sure the memory will be able to fit underneath it. Uh, obviously, if you're using water cooling, you should be fine.